there, Sandra here from Create in Spain and today I wanted to see if I could make my own jewellery bezels or perhaps bezels for keychains, that kind of thing. Now I have a Nomad CNC and I had some 4mm plywood and this is just a simple petal shape that I've cut out. But I want to stack several of these together just to make a little rod. So I've got some wood glue, fast dry wood glue, and I'm just going to stick these together and hopefully line them up so they are exactly as they should be. So here is my stack of wooden shapes. Now to make this work properly I need to sand down the edges to make sure this is all nice and smooth and nothing can catch on it. Giving this a little bit of a sand down, it feels quite smooth to my fingers. Whether it's smooth enough for this we shall see. And I want to start off at the narrow end and just wrap the wire around a few times. So. There we go. Hopefully I can now slide this out. Yep, can indeed. And I should have pretty much identically shaped petals. And as with making little rings, you should be able to just clip through the base there and separate them if that's what you want to do. There we are. And they would be the same size, which if you're making earrings is rather important. You don't want them to be different sizes. So if I want to have a pendant with the top end there, I would wrap it around here. Well, it's actually the right size, amazing. Take a piece, I'll take a pair of wire grips, I should say, and twist. And slide off, and I have my shape. Now that is basically all that a bezel is. You can, if you want to, make it longer and you can make that into a loop at the top. Or you can do what a lot of people do and you can attach the jewellery finding to the back of the pendant anyway. I've actually got a plastic coated wire here. Now I didn't buy plastic coated wire. What you can get are these laces. They're, they're plastic lace type things. I think they were designed for weaving bracelets. It's a child's toy basically. And the only reason they are coloured is because they have a thread inside. So you can use wire strippers to take the plastic off the very end and then you can pull the thread out of it. Sometimes you can reach it regardless and you can still pull it out. Other times it's well in there and it's not possible. But you grab onto it, a pair of grips here, make it a bit easier, and you simply pull the thread out. When you've done that, you can re-thread it with a thin wire. Now it does have to be a thin gauge wire. I can't tell you what gauge I used because I've long since lost the packaging, but it is a thin one. It's very easy to bend this. Um, and then you put the wire through and just thread it through, it'll go through quite easily and you end up with basically a mouldable plastic. Now this is quite handy because aside from anything else, you can choose to make irregular shapes with it if you want to. So you could make it into a heart shape or whatever and it's going to stay in that shape and of course once you've filled it with resin it's set that's it no problem and the advantage of this of course is if you happen to have cheap wire you're not going to get rust <laughs> um, being as it's coated and also it gives it that shiny look makes it a little bit thicker and it just might be an effect that you prefer 
So that's another alternative to what you can use when you want to make your bezels. It was an interesting experiment. I decided to use just straightforward masking tape to place the bezel on like so and then fill with resin. And you get this quite interesting frosted glass look. Now as it happens, because I'm going to be using a paint over this, you won't see the frosted glass, but it might be a look that you're interested in creating. Um, that seemed to do the job rather well. For this one, I'm going to use a couple of Lumiere paints by Jacquard. This one is Pewter and this is Halo Pink Gold. So this is kind of like a color shifting one. This is the Pewter. So I've not tried this on here before, so I'm gonna have a bit of fun with it. And add some of this one. So put the paint over the surface. Here is what I've ended up with. I can resin the back if I want to make it shiny, but I can trim off the little pieces here and then I can put a jewellery finding on the back of it. And that would make quite a nice little pendant. These also make nice embellishments for cards and scrapbooking and all that sort of stuff from these. Get quite stuck on, but it comes off eventually. There we go. Because those are earrings, I probably would put resin on the back. But again, no problem. Just go over it with a little resin and cure it again. I would cure these again from the back regardless, simply because I like to make sure things are well cured. But as earrings go, they're very, very light. So if you don't like wearing heavy jewellery, that's not a bad idea. Let's see how well this other one comes off. This was a little more difficult to do because of the curling design and because it also had the plastic coating as well as being curled. But it was still really workable. There we are. As you can see, this one is still fairly transparent on the back. And that is why I don't actually like it a great deal. I want more colour on the back. So I might even paint that over with black or colour the resin black and do it that way. Probably paint it because resin doesn't, or at least very opaque resin doesn't tend to cure very well. It's better to put the paint on either paint to dry and then to resin over it. So that's it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you again soon. Take care now.